As you've heard me tell other witnesses, just make yourself comfortable in that chair. Get about 12 to 15 inches from the microphone. Uh, it does adjust up, down, left, to right. And if you speak in a loud, clear voice, the electronics will pick up everything. Okay. Mr. Taylor. Good morning. Will you tell us your full name and spell your last name, please? Ashley Christina Benefield, B-E-N-E-F-I-E-L-D. How are you feeling this morning, Ashley? Nervous. All right. Try the best you can to relax, and we'll get through this. Okay. Tell us a little bit, Ashley, about where you were born and raised. Um, I was born in Corpus Christi, Texas, and I grew up in uh, Annapolis, Maryland. What type of family values were instilled in you? Jackson Rowland. Old. Um, I believe in the importance of kindness and compassion, empathy, honesty, hard work, accountability. What type of work did your father do? Um, my Jackson Rowland. I'll allow it. Um, my dad was a Naval Academy graduate who was a, a Navy pilot and then um, started flying privately for the airlines, which is what he still does. And how about your mom? Um, when I was born, my parents uh, decided that my mom would stay home to uh, take care of me full time since my dad traveled so much. Um, I want to ask you a few questions about your childhood. Did you have any siblings? Uh, I grew up an only child. Were your parents active in your development as a child? Uh, yes, um, they were very active in my schooling and um, supportive of my pursuit of the arts. Wait, hold on one second, I'm sorry. We need some, get some headsets. Headsets. Sorry. How many? We need some of to speak up. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. I misunderstood. All right, Ms. Benfield, yeah, if you could scoot a little bit closer okay. and speak up so the jury can hear you. Okay, I'm sorry. Do the best I you apologize. Can. Go ahead, sir. Sure. Do the best you can, Ashley. Okay. Do you have any hobbies? Um, I love art. Um, I like drawing, painting, sculpting, ballet. <laughs> um, I enjoy gardening, uh, baking, cooking. Most importantly, I'm a mom. What type of high school did you attend? Objection. I'm, I'm going to sustain it at this point. Um, I'm trying to establish her ballet, Your Honor. All right. If it's related to something specific, then yes. yes. Thank you. Tell us about your high school, Ashley. Um, I went to a small private uh, Christian school. And did you study anything in particular in high school? Um, I was focused on pursuing ballet. And... Was ballet a large part of your curriculum when you were in high school? Um, yes, I, I danced full-time. I actually finished my last few credits uh, my senior year with an accredited homeschool program for athletes so I could dance during the day. Do you still dance professionally? No. Why not? Um, I retired after I tore my hamstring. I want to ask you about Doug. When did the two of you meet? Um, we met August 25th of 2016. And tell us what your impression of him was when you met. He was very confident in who he was, um, passionate about what he uh, was doing for work. Uh, he was fascinating to talk to you. What was it, if you recall in particular, that attracted you to him, Ashley? Um, he was funny, uh, very smart, 
charming. Um, we just instantly clicked. Was Doug in the military? Yes, uh, just like my dad, he was in naval aviation. Did he turn out to be who you thought he was? No, not at all. I want to direct your attention, Ashley, now, if I can, to the day of the homicide, September 27, 2020. Okay. Specifically, late in the afternoon, would you tell us why Doug was at your home? Um, he came over to help load some of the larger items that my mom and I had kind of pre-staged in the garage um, into the U-Haul truck. And were there any discussions between the two of you about the order that these things should be placed in the back of the truck? Um, yes, we had discussed that um, my things would be going in last, right at the front, so they would be um, easy to get out first. Um, at one point, he had me help him load one of the larger pieces into the back of the U-Haul truck, and um, when I was up in the truck with him, I realized that everything had been all like mixed together, and it was no longer separated. Um, and I pointed that out to him, and he uh, got really offended and upset. He said, it shouldn't be your stuff, my stuff, your house, my house. Was there a particular demand he made at that time? He said, I needed to start acting like a wife. Tell us at that point how you chose to deal with him. Um, I, I tried to change the subject. I could see how upset he was getting. So I wanted to kind of alleviate that. And how was Doug reacting to your efforts to do that? He was getting more upset and aggressive and threatening. Do you attempt to avoid confrontation with him? Yes. What do you do? I was trying to get him to leave. I kept suggesting that maybe we should be done. I was saying I was tired. We should just wrap it up for the day. And what was Doug's reaction to that effort? Uh, he heard me, but he completely disregarded what I was saying. Ashley, would you tell us if there came a time shortly thereafter where there was physical contact between the two of you? Yes. Tell us about it. Um, we were in the living room, and as he came up to me, instead of walking past me, he walked like right into me, um, like a body check. He like thumped me. His, his shoulder to your shoulder? Yes. And describe for us, if you can, the, the force of the bump. Um, it caught me off guard. I almost fell. I like stumbled. How was he acting at that point? He was clearly hostile. Um, he was mumbling under his breath and was glaring at me. What was your concern? I could see that it was escalating and I didn't want him to blow up at me. Was there a second instance of physical contact? Yes. Tell us about that, please. Uh, we were in the garage and it was very much like the living room. Um, I had just suggested strongly that I wanted to be done for the day. And he, as he came up to me, he walked right into me. Again, body checked me. Finally, was there a third instance of contact? Yes. What happened? Um, we were in the hallway, and uh, we were coming opposite directions towards each other, and he had a box, and as he walked up to me, uh, he looked me in the eye, and he drove the corner of the box up into me. Where? Uh, my side. Indicating on your right side? Yes, sir. In the hip area? Yes, sir. 
what was the result of that? Um, scratching. It, it burned. Yes, sir. Actually, I'm going to hand you what's been marked as defense exhibit numbers 8, 9, and 10. Yeah, just do me a favor. Whenever you're holding them up, they were facing the jury until they're admitted. Sorry. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. 8, 9, and 10? Yes, sir. Will you tell us what Exhibit 8 represents, Ashley? Um, it's a scratch um, right here. And was that scratch caused by the cardboard box that you just related? Yes, sir. When was that photograph taken? Um, the night of September 27th, 2020, at the Sheriff's Office. Okay. And how about Exhibit Number 9? Um, also scratches um, on my side. From the same incident? Yes, sir. Also taken that evening at the sheriff's office? Yes, sir. Okay. And exhibit 10? Um, the same scratches as in 9. They're just, uh, it's a close-up. Do these photographs actually truly and accurately reflect the scratches and bruises you received on late that afternoon on September 27, 2020? Uh, yes. Do they, do they accurately reflect how the scratches looked when they were fresh? Yes. Thank you. I move respectfully, Your Honor, defense exhibits 8, 9, and 10 into evidence. Any objection? No. They'll be received. What was your response, Ashley, after being struck by the cardboard box? I apologized. Why would you have apologized? Because I could see how upset he was, and I didn't want him to get more mad at me. Where does Doug go after that incident? Um, he continued to the garage with the box. And what happens at that point? Uh, we started getting into a back and forth um, about being done for the day and what still needed to be packed and that I wanted to be done. And we ended up in our daughter's bedroom and he started screaming at me. He said, shut the f up. He started calling me names. And it he said, I can see what you're doing. You're trying to get me to leave. He said, I don't have to leave. I can stay and spend the night if I want to because I'm your husband. At that point, Ashley, how did you feel with respect to your own personal safety? I was scared. Did you take any steps to try to avoid anything further? Yes, I, I ran to try to leave the house. And where did you run to? To the front door. Did you make it? No. Tell us what happened. <laughs> he stopped me. He ah. grabbed me by the hand and he yanked me back. I'm not really sure how he did it, but he like spun around so he was in front of me. <laughs> Between me and the door. So He said... <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. He said, where the f you think you're going? What was your response? Do you specifically recall? Tell us. I just blurted it out. I said, I'm done, and you need to leave now. What was Doug's reaction to that command to leave now? He said, you can't f 
leave me. Then what happens? He hit me in the side of the head. Actually, I'm going to ask you what's been marked as defendant's exhibit number seven. Tell us what that represents. Uh, it's a picture of my face. Is it an accurate picture of what your face looked like on that night? Yes, sir. Who took that photograph? Um, I don't remember her name. She was, was at the sheriff's office. At the sheriff's office? Okay. Now... What is it about that photograph that shows or reflects the slap or the hit that you got to the side of your head on that day by Doug? Um, that side of my face is like swollen and puffy and discolored around my eye. And is your eyelid drooping? Yes. On the side where you were hit? Yes. Your Honor, I move... Fence exhibit number seven into evidence. Received. What was different on at that moment, Ashley, than at any time in your prior relationship with Doug? He had never actually hit me before. What did you do? I ran. Where? To my room. Why? I was scared. Ashley, did you have anything in your room that could protect you? I had my gun. Did you grab the gun? Yes. As you're grabbing the gun, what, if anything, did you hear? I heard the door hitting the doorstop. As if it is flung open? Yes. And what do you see, Ashley, when you look up? <laughs> Doug was standing in the doorway. His face was red. <laughs> like the veins were bulging in his neck. The way he was looking at me, he didn't even look like Doug. <laughs> His eyes were black. Does he yell anything at you? He said, you're fucking done. And what does he do at that point? I, I held the gun like in front of me and I, I said, stop. And he like turned and he got into this like, it was like a fighting stance. He like I got low and he started like moving his arms and his hands around. And he was making these like jerking motions. What were you expecting when you were holding the gun out in front of you and you told him to stop? I thought when he saw it he would leave. Did he? No. At that point, Ashley, what are you <laughs> thinking? I thought he was gonna kill me. Tell us what happens next. He started coming towards me, and then he lunged at me, and I started pulling the trigger. And he just kept coming, and I remember trying to move to get away from him, but he kept coming at me. Ashley, would you tell us why, if you're holding a loaded firearm, you were attempting to move away? I was trying to get away from him. I was terrified. All right, so you're firing. 
he keeps advancing. What happens next? It was like his feet slipped out from under him and his legs went up in the air. When Doug hits the floor, what's your immediate reaction? I ran to get home. Can you tell us how many shots you fired? I have no idea. I was in a panic. Do you remember anything about the shooting beyond what you've told us here? It was a blur. Where did you run for help, Ashley? To my neighbor's house. What's your neighbor's name? Uh, John Sant. Ashley, I have to ask you a couple of very difficult questions. You okay? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Ashley, tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury why you shot Doug. I was scared to death. I, I thought he was going to kill me. There was nowhere to go. I was trapped. In my own house, he wouldn't let me leave. As you sit here today, Ashley, how do you feel about what happened? Horrible. He's the father of my child. It's okay, you have to explain it all to her. Judge, I wonder, could we have a minute, maybe a brief recess, to let have her compose herself? All right. This is the jury. Uh, if you could step out for a couple of minutes, we'll bring you right back. Just leave your notes where they are. You put them face down. Please don't begin your deliberations. Uh, you can use your phones, but don't talk with anybody outside the jury about the case. Don't do any research on the people, places, things, or legal topics we're going to talk anything about. Thank you. All right, y'all can have a seat. Ms. Benefield, you can have a seat. You need to take a moment to compose yourself. Yeah, would it be all right if she stepped out? No, sir. May I approach her? With no conversation? As long as you don't say anything. Yeah. Do not say a word. Yes. back in. Yes, sir. They might have stepped into the facility, so we'll wait a minute.
All right, let's bring them in. All right, we're gonna. It'll be a, a couple of more minutes till the jurors are, are finished with their break. Uh, so uh, let's well, it's nine fifty six. Let's say at uh, ten oh five we'll reconvene. Miss Benefield, I'm gonna allow you to leave the stand. However, you are in the middle of your testimony. You may not communicate with anyone at all during your testimony. Do you understand? So you can step down and use the facilities. That's just fine, but you cannot communicate even with your attorney while you're testifying, all right? Okay, you need to step out, you can do so. So we'll be in recess until about 10.05 or so. Go ahead and bring him in. All right, y'all can have a seat. Welcome back, everybody. Did anybody begin deliberation to talk about the case amongst yourselves? Did anybody communicate with anybody outside the jury about the case? Or did anybody do any research on the people, places, things, or legal topics we've heard anything about? No, sir. Everybody says no. Mr. Taylor, you can resume your direct examination. Thank you, Judge White. <clears throat> Ashley, would you tell us where the pistol was in your bedroom? Uh, it was in a storage bin. It was on top of my laundry basket. 
Will you describe the storage bin? Um, it was like a square bin with hard sides and cloth covering the sides. Do you remember how old Emerson, your child, was at the time of this incident? Uh, about two. Was Emerson able to access that storage bin? No. Whose firearm was it? Mine. <clears throat> Did you have a license? Yes, sir. I'm going to show you, <clears throat> Ashley, what's previously been marked as Defendant's Exhibit Number 2. Your Honor, I'd like to, if I could, put that up on the screen. Could we? Are you from the Elmo? Uh, for, for the blinds. Ashley, take a look at the picture on your concealed firearm license. And in particular, are we able to zoom in on the portrait, the picture? Yeah. Ashley, do your eyelids look the same in that picture? Yes, sir. Do they look different? In the picture that we admitted after you were slapped? Yes, sir. Let's put the... Let me see now. Let's put uh, defendant's exhibit number seven up on the screen. Ashley, what side of your face did he hit you on? The left side. The left, the left side. side. And as we're looking at this picture, it would be to the right? Correct. Is your eyelid on the right side the same as your eyelid on the left side? Uh, no, sir. And how about your eyebrow? The space between your eyebrow and your eyelid on the right side. Is that the same as the space between your eyebrow and your eyelid on the other side? No, sir. All right. Thank you, Judge. I think we can lift, lift the blinds. <clears throat> Was the firearm registered to you, Ashley? Uh, yes. I'd, I'd like to now return you, direct your attention back to your initial introduction to Doug. How long was it before Doug expressed his devotion to you? Um, it was about four days after we met that he told me he loved me. Did any significant event follow after he expressed his love for you? Um, he flew me to South Carolina, where he was living at the time, and asked me to marry him, and I said yes. You remember the date? Um, September 7th, 2016. How old was he at the time on September 7th, 2016? Uh, 54. And how old were you? 24. When you finally moved in together, what was it like? Um, it was challenging. Um, 
Doug hadn't told his daughter Eva that we had gotten married. And so when she found out, she was really upset. Um, just understandable. Uh, her mom had suddenly passed eight or nine months before. And I was a complete stranger to her. Now I'm moving into her house. At that point in your relationship, Ashley, describe for us the man you thought you'd married. Um, he was very loving and attentive. Um, he was always with me. We did everything together. Um, we laughed a lot. And he made me feel very special and loved. He always was looking for ways to be with me and to do things for me. Was there a short time after that that you were separated? Um, yes, sir. And what was the reason? Um, before I had met him, I had planned a trip, and so I, I went on my trip. It was a cruise with my mom and one of my girlfriends. Were you able to communicate with Doug while you were on the cruise? <sighs> yes, sir. How? Uh, we mostly messaged each other. I'm going to pass to you what's been marked as defendant's exhibit number three, I believe, for identification. Oh, three. I'm sorry. Oh, the ones that need Sorry. Yes, sir. Take a minute and go through those, and I'm going to ask you about them. Okay. Do you want me to read all of them, or? Yeah, yeah okay. Go through all of them. And then I'm going to ask you some questions about it. Okay. messages actually a true and accurate copy of the messages you received from Doug Benefield while you were on the cruise? Yes. Your Honor, at this time, <coughs> I would move defense exhibit number three into evidence. Objection? Yes. Defense Exhibit Number Three. Any additional objections? Oh, I'm sorry, not a, not other than what we discussed. Okay. Admitted, subject to what we discussed at the bench. Ashley, in this Exhibit Number Three. Whose 
represented in blue and who's represented in green. May I took, take a look again? Um, I'm I'm blue, and Doug is green. You're blue and Doug is green. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. So, I want to ask you what you thought and how you felt after this series of text messages where he said the following to you. And I'll go through them and you can respond. Okay. Like always being armed. And understanding them and how to conduct warfare in them for the kingdom. If I dwelt on it, I would go into a rage to remove them from the earth. I desire to exterminate them, and holding back is a challenge. They are rats that should be removed. Last night, just the jerks arguing near you about put me in sheer murderous mood, but I was stuck. I couldn't defend you. But could have been a fight, etc. Only you being with me will over time remove the images in my head. It is same. And knowing you were taken advantage of still in my mind makes me explode with anger to take them out. God made you for me. You haven't seen the warrior side and never want to. We went from joy and passion to now I'm in a testosterone rage inside. But kill the bad people. How long had you been married when you received these texts from Doug? Um, I believe it was about... A, a month or so, probably thereabouts. Um, Do you recall approximately how long you had been married? Well, I, we got married in the beginning of September, and this would have been um, the end of November. Okay. So, uh, what, more than that, I'm sorry. What did you think? Did, was there anything about those texts? that caused you to pause? You know, at, at the time, I kind of tried to write it off that he was my new husband and he was just trying to be um, kind of manly and, you know, be protective and, you know, was trying to show that he really loved me. Um, I think that was kind of what I Did you think it was flattering? Yeah. Ashley, how long did this facade that you've described of Doug's last? Probably about three months. <laughs> and what signs did you begin to see that he was not who you thought he was? Oh, when I got back from the cruise, he started becoming very, um, like, controlling and possessive. He started criticizing everything about me, like the way I would wear my hair or did my makeup or the way I dressed. Um, I found myself trying to change everything about me to make him happy. If you had to pinpoint a specific incident, Ashley, early on that stands out to you, what would that be? 
a friend of his had come to town to visit and we went out to dinner with him. And uh, when we went to leave, Doug had had a little too much to drink. And so I said that I would drive home and he instantly got really mad at me. He was offended. Um, he started screaming at me and it continued all the way home. And when we got inside, I told him that he was drunk and he just needed to go to bed. And that really set him off. And he uh, tried to flip over the dining room table. He threw a chair at me. He kept screaming at me until he stopped. And then he apologized. And he said it would never happen again. He said he's really sorry. And Ashley... Did it happen again? Yes. Explain what happened. Um, we had gone to church uh, one Sunday, and after service, um, you know, after everyone was leaving, we uh, talked to the pastor in like the lobby area in front, and um, at one point, Doug stormed off and by the time I caught up with him I was in the parking lot and he started cussing at me calling me names and when we got in the truck he accused me of having a thing for the pastor and he said I was a slut and a whore and he screamed at me all the way home Ashley was he aggressive and threatening like that in other instances it started happening more and more um, with me and with our animals he would hurt our pets on approximately how many occasions was he cruel to your pets um, a handful how would Doug react following a dark episode well he was either really up or really down um, and after, he'd be very sweet and apologetic, and he'd be kind, and things would be good. And it was kind of like a flip of a switch, and something would set him off again. Did you find anything one day, Ashley, that gave you insight into Doug's marriage to his previous wife, Renee? Yes, sir. Tell us what it was. Uh, I had been going through and kind of cleaning and organizing. And I was going through a bunch of old devices like phones and iPads. And um, I found uh, a texting conversation between Doug and Renee, his previous wife. Let me pass to you, Ashley, what we've marked as Defendant's Exhibit Number 11. Can you identify that, Ashley? Um, this is part of the, the texting conversation. This is a text from Renee Benefield to Doug. Is that a true and accurate copy of what you came across that day that you just related to us? Yes, sir. At this point, I'd like to move that into evidence as defense exhibit number 11. No objection. Received. <laughs> I'm going to read this to you. Let me know if it's accurate. Okay. I was deeply disappointed that you distorted the truth about who you really were when I married you. I loved you, though finding out you weren't really what you pretended to be. You kicking me so hard on New Year's Eve on our honeymoon because you were having trouble functioning in certain areas. 
you holding a gun to your head twice in my home that I opened to you with my children that still love you, having to sell everything down to my wedding ring. Finding out you were on Viagra, which all of you had to do was tell me, you know I wouldn't care. Trying to film us making love on our honeymoon. Finding out that you wore eye pencil on and on. I loved you so much I didn't care. That's why I was shocked to think you would take pictures of me without asking. Is that accurate? Yes. Tell us, Ashley, how Doug would act when he would go off. Um, he, he would call it a fit of rage. Sometimes it was as simple as him just yelling and screaming at me or cussing at me, calling me names. Other times he would throw things or break things or smash things. He would come at me like he was going to hit me. He told me I was lucky that he punched walls instead of me. Are there any incidences in particular, Ashley, that stand out to you? Yes. Tell us, please. We were having an argument, and he came at me like he was going to hit me. And our dog, Sully, <laughs> jumped up in between us. And you punched him in the face so hard that he knocked him out. I just remember screaming because I thought he had killed him. Were there other times that Doug hurt the animals? Yes, he had hit, uh, kicked, punched Sully. Um, he threw our cat multiple times. One time he threw Snuffy down the stairs. What kind of impact did this behavior have on you? Uh, I was always walking on eggshells, trying to do the right things. Because if I said the wrong thing, you would get mad at me. And so I always tried to do it right. If I wore the wrong thing, he would call me a whore or a slut. I, I feel like I couldn't do anything right. Was there an incident, Ashley, in June of 2017 that you vividly recall? Yes. Please explain it. Uh, we were having a, an argument, and it started getting really out of hand. He, he pulled a gun out, and he was, like, waving it around. And then he threw it at me. And it hit the wall behind me, punched a hole in the wall. And when I went to run to try to leave, he pulled the gun out and held it to his head. He said that he was going to blow his fucking brains out, and I was going to have to watch him. And he pulled the trigger, and he shot a hole in the ceiling in the kitchen. Ashley, at that point, what were you thinking about your marriage? He wasn't anything like I thought he was. I feel like I had made a really big mistake marrying him. It was like I was living in this nightmare. I never knew what I was going to get. Did there come a time in July or August of 2017 when you found yourself with child? Yes. So let's be clear here chronologically. You became pregnant after this incident where you related that he shot the gun in the ceiling of the kitchen? Yes, it would have been like right after that, I guess. 
Was it planned? No, it was the last thing on my mind at that point. How would you deal with Doug? I tried to do all the right things and keep him happy. Um, kind of just go with the flow. I didn't want to rock the boat ever. Did you have a difficult pregnancy? Yes, I was really sick. Did you go home from South Carolina to stay with your mom here in Bradenton at the end of August 2017? Yes, sir. Did there come a time when you returned to South Carolina? Yes. Would you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury, Ashley, why you returned to South Carolina? I had decided that I was going to leave him, and so I went back to get my things. Um, when he brought me down, he didn't, I didn't even have like a suitcase or anything, so I went back to get my stuff. And I, I wrote him a note and left him a letter saying why I was leaving. All right, Ashley, um, can you identify what we marked for identification of the fence exhibit? Number? That's a kind of jack. Sustained. She can't even identify it. No, sir. I, I beat my ruling. You told us you left him a letter? Yes. All right. I'm going to ask you a series of questions. Let me pass this to you. you can Judge, I'm going to object. Sustain. Do you remember independently everything that you said in the letter? N not everything, no. Would it help refresh your recollection if you were able to see the letter? Yes. Judge objection. Sustained. At the time that you wrote the letter, Ashley, were the contents fresh in your mind? At the time, yes. The letter was written in September 2017? Yes, that's correct. It's now 2024? Yes, sir. So, seven years ago? Yes. All right. Do your best Okay. to try to re respond to a series of questions I'm going to ask you. Okay. What did you tell Doug? Objection here, sir. Sustained. Sir, can we approach, please?
How did you feel about your personal safety when you left Doug? I was scared. What was it that made you uncomfortable? There's a lot of things. It's the things that he had done, like punching our dog and shooting the gun and different things he would say and do. And were you afraid for just you? I was pregnant at the time. I was scared for the baby. Were there instances, Ashley, where you felt that your own safety had been placed in danger as a result of conduct by him? Yes. Can you give us some examples? Well, I guess one thing that comes to mind is sometimes he would drive really a scary yelling and screaming at me and like running up on curbs. One time he almost hit a tree. Did you strike that? Describe the kind of things that would be done to intimidate you. He would get in my face, he'd yell at me, he'd come at me like he was going to hit me. What about breaking things? He would break things, smash things, threw things at me. How would you describe, if you were using adjectives, his behavior? Possessive, controlling, manipulative, aggressive, scary, unpredictable. Ashley, did you take any steps in addition to leaving this letter to protect yourself in South Carolina? Yes. What did you do? I filed for a um, domestic violence injunction, like a protective order. Ashley, I'd like to pass to you what we've marked as Defendants Exhibit 13A and 13B and ask you if you can identify them. Okay. Um, 
13a is the Actually, what was the date? Um, did the court grant the injunction? Yes, sir. Was there a hearing? Yes, sir. Were you present at the hearing? Yes. Was Doug present at the hearing? Yes. Did the judge rule at the hearing? From the bench, yes. All right. What was the date of the hearing? Um, November 3rd, 2017. I'm sorry? November 3rd, 2017. 2017? Yes. Okay, now, was that order that the judge decreed violated? Yes. By who? By Doug. How? Um, he sent me a package in the mail. Sent you the package here in Florida? Yes. In South Carolina? Yes. What was the package represented to be? Um, a birthday gift, I believe. And did you open it? Yes. What happened? Uh, well, when I opened it, there was an overwhelming smell, like a real strong chemical smell, and I got like an instant headache. Did you report it to the police? Yes. Ashley, I'm going to pass to you what we've marked as defendants exhibit number 14 and ask you if you can identify it. Okay. So what do I do with these? Okay. Um, yes. What is it? It's a picture of the package he sent to me. Is it a true and accurate picture of the package that you received on that day in November? Uh, the outside of it, yes. All right, Your Honor, on behalf of Ms. Benefield, we move that into evidence. No, Judge. Received. Defendant's Exhibit 14. What did you do with the package after you opened it? 
I sealed it back up and I put it in the garage um, before I brought it to the sheriff's department. Now, you told us when you received the package, aside from the contents giving you a headache, um, that it was in violation of the South Carolina restraining order? Yes. Did you, when you contacted the police, request that they take some action? Yes. What was the result? No charges. subsequently notified Ashley by the state attorney's office um, here in Manatee County that no charges were to be filed? Yes. Do you remember the date that you were notified? Um, not off the top of my head. Let me show this to you and see if it refreshes your recollection. Uh, at the top, it says October 8th, 2018. Ashley, when did you give birth to Emerson? <coughs> um, March 19th, 2018. Where was Doug when you gave birth? He wasn't there. It was during the restraining order from South Carolina. So he wouldn't have been allowed to have contact with you? Correct. Do you remember how long the South Carolina restraining order was to last? I believe it was six months. Does there come a time when you're concerned about the South Carolina restraining order expiring? Yes. So at or about the time of that, <clears throat> what steps, if any, did you take to protect yourself? I filed for a um, domestic violence injunction here in Florida. What was the result? It was denied. And was there any directive entered with respect to Emerson? Uh, there was a time-sharing agreement set up. Shortly after that, or at or about the same time, was there additional litigation that you filed? Yes. Do you recall what it was for? Uh, divorce and termination of parental rights. In the termination of parental rights petition, Ashley, <clears throat> did you tell the court? Go ahead and finish the question. Do we, did you advise the court in your petition about prior domestic acts of violence by Doug? Yes. Overruled. I'm sorry. Overruled, you may answer. I'm, I'm sorry. Did you okay? Go ahead. Okay, yes. Do you remember, or can you tell us today 
what you told the court? Um, I mean, not all off the top of my head. You can answer. Um, I wouldn't be able to tell it all to you off the top of my head from memory now. Okay, let's see if I can refresh your recollection. Would you like me to read the whole thing, sir? I'm sorry? Do you want me to read the whole thing? Uh, no. Okay. Um, I would just like to ask you, has your recollection been reflect, ref, refreshed? Um, I'm just getting to that part now. Okay. Then, without referring to what's in front of you, tell us. Well, can I finish reading this section? The yeah, you need to remove the document if the memory's been refreshed. Well, I just said I didn't finish reading that part. So needs to finish reading. I'm sorry. Okay. I don't expect you to remember all the details. I'm going to ask you for the high points. Okay, sorry, there's, there's just a lot in here. Um. Tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury, Ashley, <clears throat> the things that you had to say. Um, I talked about him punching Sully and kicking him, throwing our cat Snuffy, about him trapping me, grabbing me, yanking me, tripping me, um, shooting the gun in the house, punching holes in the walls. Um, we trap me in the closet, smash things, things like that. All right. As part of the domestic violence injunction that you filed here in Florida, that was before Judge Moreland, was a deposition taken of Doug? Yes. Were you present? Yes, by phone. 
who else was present at the deposition? Uh, my attorney, as well as Stephanie Murphy, Doug's attorney, uh, and a court reporter. Was the judge present at the deposition? No. Were you able to hear the entire proceeding? Yes, sir. Did Doug make objection? Approach. Ashley, did Doug admit to placing an illegal tracker on your vehicle? Yes, in a message to me. Did you report that to the police? Yes. What was the result? No charges. Were there incidents, Ashley, where Doug would appear unexpectedly? Yes, a lot. And how would that come about? Can you I, give us an example? I'd be driving down the road and I'd see him in the rearview mirror, a couple cars behind me, or he'd be right behind me. Or sometimes he would show up at places that I was just unexpected. I'd see him or like in the parking lot. And was this while you were living here in Manatee? Yes, I was living here. And where was Doug living at the time? In South Carolina. How could he do that? Uh, he was driving here. Was this also during the time that the South Carolina injunction was in place? Uh, both then and after as well. Did you report those incidents to the police? Yes. What was the result? No charges. Was there an incident with a neighbor, Ashley? Yes. What happened? Um, Ashley, she... were you present? Yes. For the incident? Yes. He was outside in the yard at night looking in the windows of my house. What is the neighbor's name? Marianne Croft. And was this reported to the police? Yes. Did they respond? Uh, yes, they came out. Was it daytime or nighttime? It was nighttime. In your presence, was an identification made that it was Doug? Yes. What was the result? Uh, no charges. Was there an incident, in Ashley, where you and your mother came home um, to find someone in the driveway of your home? Yes. Who was it? Uh, it was Doug. What did he do when he saw you? Uh, he was on foot in front of the house, and when he saw us, he took off running. Did you call the police? Uh, yes, I, I had to call several times before they sent someone out. Did they take a report? Um, they did, but by the time... They finally got there. He was long gone. What was the result? No charges. I want to introduce what we've marked as Defendants Exhibit 23 and 24. Can you identify that? Uh, yes. Um, what does 23 show? Uh, 23 is a picture of Doug with his shirt off. He's like taking a selfie. And is that how Doug looked at or about the time of the shooting on the 27th? Yes. All right. And what does the next exhibit show? <clears throat> uh, it's also a picture of Doug with his shirt off. He's working out. Um, he's like doing like a push-up, I guess. Uh, does that too accurately represent what Doug looked like on the day of the homicide? Yes. Your Honor, on behalf of the defense, we move those two exhibits into evidence. Any objection? No. Received. Just <coughs> one or two more questions, Ashley. <clears throat> Was there a time back around May of 2020 where 
you wanted to learn about co-parenting with an abuser. Yes. Sustained. To the question, Your Honor, or to the line of inquiry? To the question. Okay. <clears throat> Did you take any steps, Ashley, to try to determine how to co-parent? Uh, yes. All right. And what was that? I did some like, Googling and reading to try to find helpful articles on what to do to make things I'm good. I'm pass to you what we've <clears throat> had marked as uh, Defense Composite Exhibit 4, A, B, C, and D. Objection. Can you approach... Defendants, oh, go ahead. It's heavy. Thank you. No, I already, I already ruled on authenticity in the past. So, over the defense, over the state's objection, admitted. Thank you. <clears throat> Take a look at uh, Exhibit Four A, Ashley. <clears throat> What's the date? Um, 5-11-2020. And did you do an internet search on 5-11-23? Uh, 2020, yes. 2020, rather? Yes. And will you tell us what the subject you researched was? <clears throat> um, domestic co-parenting with an abuser. All right, and would you go to Exhibit 4B? What's the date of 4B? 5-11-2020. Uh, Did you do an internet search then? Yes. What was the subject you researched? Uh, ask Amanda, <clears throat> uh, how do I co-parent with an abuser? All right, and 4C? Yes. Uh, What's the date of 4C? 5-11-2020. And did you do an internet search then as well? Yes. What was the subject? Co-parenting versus parallel parenting with an abusive ex, the Good Men Project. All right, and lastly, 4D. <clears throat> What's the date of 4D? 5-11-2020. Did you do an, uh, an internet search? Yes. What was the subject? Uh, six tips to help you co-parent with an abusive ex. All right, Your Honor, I think I'm 
finished if you just give me one moment. Actually, I'm going to pass you what's been previously admitted as defense exhibit number six. Okay. Do you recognize it? Yes. What is it? Um, it's a whole chain of emails um, that were forwarded to me by my attorney. And when, what is the date it was forwarded to you on? Uh, it says Wednesday, September 23rd of 2020. Did you read it? Yes. I mean, do you want me to reread it now? or? Did you read it when it was forwarded to you? Yes. <clears throat> no further questions, Your Honor. Y'all can have a seat. Welcome back, everybody. Over the lunch break, did anybody talk amongst yourselves or discuss the case in any way? Did anybody talk with anybody outside of the jury about the case? Or did anybody do any research on the people, places, things, or legal topics we've heard anything about? No, sir. Everybody says no. On state, you may begin your cross-examination. I would like to just start with a, a couple of issues. So first, Doug Benefield never punched you, ever. Correct? Um, yeah, I'd okay. say that's correct. Doug Benefield never choked you, ever. Uh, no. He never kicked you? No. He never pointed a gun at you? I, he waved a gun in my direction. But it was not pointed at you, correct? It was pointed at me while he was waving it at me. He never came at you with a knife? No. Or a club? No. Or a baseball bat? No. So there are 30 years difference between you and Doug, correct? Yes. And you got married after 13 days? Yes. And you spoke with him about or organized with him about starting this ballet? Uh, yes. Okay. And all of the money for the ballet came from him or investors, right? Um, my mom also funded the part of the ballet. You didn't put anything into it? Money? Um, not from my account, no. Okay. In fact, during this time in South Carolina, you never worked, did you? Um, he wouldn't let me work. Okay. When you said in the very beginning he flew you to South Carolina to visit before you were married, he paid for that, correct? Yes. Okay. And the cruise you talked about going on, he paid for that? Uh, no. He didn't? He did not pay for the cruise. No. Okay. Yeah, he he paid um, for my friend to go, but I had already paid for my mom and I to go. So. Okay. So he paid for your friend to go? Yes. And he did not go with you? Oh, no. Mm -mm. I want to ask you about the text messages that the defense talked to you about. Um, it's going to be Defense Exhibit 3. I'm going to hand it to you. And I have the entirety of it on a spreadsheet that I'm going to put up, which is State's Exhibit 99. If we could dim the lights, please. And judge, based on the rule of completeness, state would enter into evidence states 99. Did you want to be heard in addition to what we said earlier? I haven't actually seen the specific message.
Any objection to states 99? No. Received. So I'm going to put this up on the board behind you, screen. Trying to get it to come up on the screen. Okay. So I would like to orient you to what we're looking at. So on the top line, it gives whether the messages are out, outgoing or incoming. That would be the third, fourth column that we're looking at. And what I would like you to do is read the body of these as we go through. I'm going to expand it so you can see it. And if you could just read these for the jury. Okay. Um, one part is just looking at Renee. Who is, is that from you or from Doug? Uh, from, it's, it's from Doug to okay. me. So from Doug, one part is just looking at Renee. Okay, go ahead. I'll tell that part to start. The day I met her... I felt her before I saw her. Bo. My ex-husband lived to argue. Renee and I maybe argued five times in 15 years and even then ended up laughing. Smiley face. I'm a clown at heart and love people being happy. That seems like a hard act to follow. Baby. Like, always being armed. Yes, my love. And the oh, outgoing messages are you or Doug? Um, it looks like outgoing is Doug. Um, yeah, out. Outgoing would be from Doug. Judge, can we see the date for reference of the messages? It's up on the screen. So, yes, my love, I think was the last thing you said. And then what's the next thing? Um, are you doing things that are dangerous? And you're going to have to speak up just a little bit. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, Here. Are you doing things that are dangerous? To think of all the time that you were not with me and understanding them and how to conduct warfare in them for the kingdom. Where was he when he was sending you these messages? While you were on the um, cruise? I believe he would have been in Charleston. Okay. He wasn't on a business trip. Uh... I don't, I don't believe so. 
Okay. Continue reading. All the other people. Um, all the other people. Uh, and then a rectangle. It makes me so sad. And then another rectangle. If I dwelt on it, I would go into rage to remove them from the earth. And your response to that? Uh, yes, baby. I hate it. It hurts. Uh, he said I could defend myself. And you were easy prey for predators. You're sweet and want to please people, and they used that. And you said? Or, um, I'm sorry, he, and then he said? I desire to exterminate them, and holding back is a challenge. They are rats that should be removed. And you said? Oh, baby, my love. Yes. Like that night, like, I'm sorry, like last night, just the jerks arguing uh, near you about put me in a sheer murderous mood, but I was stuck and I couldn't defend you. I, I said, thank you, baby, but I was okay. He said, um, but could have been a fight, etc. Only you being with me will over time remove images in my head. It is same. And knowing you were taken advantage of in my mind makes me explode with anger to take them out. God made you for me. And I said, yes, baby. He said to enjoy the beauty he did craft on earth. I see Renee as Eva's mom, not my wife. It is strange, but... Let me pull that back up. Uh, he said, it is strange, but there is no emotional connection. I said, well, I'm glad. I just wish I could see it that way. And you said, I'm glad. I wish I could see it that way. Were you talking about being jealous of his relationship with Renee? Um, I guess you could put it that way. Okay. You can continue to read. Um, I know... We both have a battle to fight in our minds. He was sitting on the mantle in the background. I'm crazy, I know. Uh, but it just killed my head, heart. I know, I see you in my mind with a bad person with your legs spread and a shitty person choking you out that haunts me I love you and I never want to hurt you I'm sorry oh, rectangle Right now, I literally want to kill him or them. I said, baby, don't even think like that. He said, you haven't seen the warrior side, and you never want to. I said, no one will ever touch me. I am yours. I don't. You are right. I want to see you only as my sweet and loving husband, who is gentle to me and kind. Um, he said... We went from joy and passion to now I'm in a testosterone rage inside. And who is always there and safe? That's what I said. And I said, let's not ruin the day. He said, but kill the bad people. Okay. And I said, tell me that you love me. So this conversation was about things that you had told him that people had done to you, correct? Um, when he's talking about, I'm imagining this, I'm imagining people choke you, he's talking about a conversation that you had had with him explaining that this had happened. Uh, I think he was referring to 
um, on the cruise one night I was talking to him on the phone and I was sitting out in the hallway up at the top deck and um, I was just trying to get somewhere where it would be quiet so I could talk to him. And uh, it was near, there was some like a, like a bar or something up there, I think, I'm not sure. But people were coming in and out, like maybe a restaurant. And while we okay, were talking, I'm stop you he there. heard. Is the answer yes She's or no? Did. She's saying, you still allow her to finish her rounds or draw? You finish your answer. Um, he had heard a couple guys that were talking loudly, and he got upset because he thought these guys were going to hurt me. And so he had talked about then that he imagined that, you know, I was out in the world without him and that people were going to take advantage of me and that he didn't know it was going to happen to me. And he was afraid for your safety. Yeah. yeah. And he was saying that if anybody hurts you or he thinks about anybody hurting you, it sends him into a rage. Yes. And that scared you. I'm sorry. And that scared you. Um, well, as I said earlier, at the time I kind of, you know, played it off in my head that he was just my new husband who was trying to be protective and like show that he loved me by kind of being, you know, manly. Okay. So I want to talk about you having a baby. So Doug had a vasectomy removal in April of 2017, right? Uh, yes. And you paid for that? Um, part of it went on my debit card or my credit card. And your intention was to get pregnant? Uh, yes, we had talked about that, yeah. Okay. And this was how many months after you were married? Uh, we got married in September, so October, November, December, January, February, March, April. Uh, seven. And was this... During this time, you said he had started criticizing you, right? Mm -hmm. About your, the way you looked, your clothes, the way you acted. He was, according to you, uh, he flipped a table, tried to flip a table, threw a chair, right? Yes. He would scream at you. Yes. He would call you slut and whore. Yes. And you want a baby. I mean, yeah, we were, we were married. We wanted a family. Okay. So the vasectomy reversal happens, and I believe you said that this baby was a surprise. Is that what you said? Um, well, we weren't, like, planning on it right then, you yeah. know. Were you having unprotected sex? Um, I suppose so. Okay. So you knew that unprotected sex would result potentially in a pregnancy? Uh, the doctor had told us that it probably wouldn't work for a while, so um, it wasn't something that we thought would happen that fast. Okay. But it did? Yes. How quickly? When did you get pregnant? Um, I guess July. And right around this time is when you say the incident happened where Doug um, threw a gun at a wall he threw it at me. Shot a gun at the ceiling. I think mm -hmm. you made several allegations, correct? Um, yeah, he admitted to it, but yes. What were you arguing about? I think Eva was part of it. I don't specifically remember. And wasn't it true that you had a problem with Eva and you thought she was disrespecting you at that time? I wouldn't say I had a problem with Eva. There was a lot of tension in the house, but yeah, there's a lot of things going on that okay. were not ideal. You knew she was 15. Yeah. And you knew she had just lost her mother tragically to death. Yeah. And you were how much older than her? Um, uh, 10 years, nine years, 10 years. And this tension surprised you? No. I mean, at first he had told me that she was really going to love me and that she was ready to have a woman in her life and that he wanted me to move in quickly because she needed a mom. So he made it sound like she also felt that way. And you had no feelings of your own? You oh, I, 
I was excited to get to be her stepmom. And you gave her a shadow box right around this time, correct? Um, for Christmas, so it would have been in December. All right. And what was the shadow box? Do you want me to describe it? Yes. Uh, it was like a a small picture that had like deep sides and like the glass was at the front of it. And there was a sand dollar that I had uh, painted and decorated. And I put it on like a black cardstock. And I wrote um, a saying on it that said um, something about how like you can be strong through the storms and that, you know, seashells um, are beautiful things that come out of storms. And that shadow box is the reason you were arguing that day with Doug, correct? Um, I, I know it came up at one point. I don't know if that was the reason. And what was the problem with the shadow box? Um, Eva had uh, taken it apart and um, I guess had thrown out the thing that I made and was using the picture frame for something else. What was she using the picture frame for? Uh, she had put a, a rose from her mom's funeral in it. And that upset you pretty badly, didn't it? It made me really sad. I had taken a lot of time to make it for her, and I, I thought it was special. And and yeah. you began crying. Yes. And you dropped to the floor um, and sobbed hysterically. Probably. You were so upset that she put her dead mother's rose in the shadow box. I, it wasn't that. It was that she took it apart. I mean, I would have bought her another shadow box. You went to Doug and said it was disrespectful that she took this apart. According to Doug? No, according or, to you. You okay. went to Doug and said, she's acting disrespectfully. You need to handle her. She upset me. I don't, I'm crying. I don't remember saying that about that. Isn't it, in fact, what you were arguing about before this whole incident with the gun and the ceiling? Um, So the day that this argument happened, you actually, at one point, were in the car with Doug, right? Yes. Okay, you were going to the bank and going to do some other errands? I believe so. And the entire time, you're upset about this shadow box? Um, I don't distinctly remember that, but okay. the, the argument kind of came from there, I guess. And in fact, it wasn't an argument, right? It was you being upset. Well, he said that like life was out of control and he couldn't deal with the, the people at home and he couldn't deal with the people at the ballet. And, and he felt he, like everything was just too stressful and he was upset with everybody. And didn't he ask you to stop? I'm sure at some point. And you didn't stop? I, I guess not. For the car ride? No? Yes I, or no? I, 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 don't, I don't remember. And you kept telling him, you need to discipline Eva. I don't remember saying that. Okay. And he said, let's just stop talking about this for a while. I need to think. He was yelling at me. So he's yelling at you, but you weren't sitting there like you are now, were you? You weren't sitting there like this. I guess I was buckled into the car, so I probably would have been sitting further back. And you didn't stop. And then you get home. You're still arguing, correct? He's still yelling at me, yes. And you're not yelling at all. <laughs> and the fact that he had a gun with him when you continued to argue in the house was because he grabbed the gun from inside the car to bring his items from the car into the house, correct? 
I'm not sure why he had it, I, I guess. Okay. And it was in a holster. I believe so. And you both used to carry guns. Mm -hmm. You carried guns on a regular basis. Yes, ma'am. You ma have had, at the time, more than one gun. Um, I, yes, ma'am. And you actually bragged, as well as Doug, about having guns, correct? Yes. And you would go shoot them on a regular basis? I haven't been to their range since before the um, presidential election. Okay. But during the time that you met Doug at a political event, you had one of the guns in your bra. Uh, yes, that's where I concealed carried. Okay. So having a firearm in a car or in the house is not that unusual to you? No, ma'am. All right. So after you get back inside, there's this argument that continues on and on and on and on. And you're still asking Doug to discipline Eva. I don't recall that. Okay. And you say he was waving a gun around and threw a gun at you. Is that what you said? Uh, yes, ma'am. So he, he has a gun in his hand, could point it at you. He did point it at me. But he throws the, a gun at the wall. No, he threw it at me. He missed me. Okay. And it hit the wall. Yes, ma'am. Okay. When was this? What was the date of this argument? Um, I believe it was the end of June. 2017. Yes, ma'am. When was your wedding reception? Um, it was shortly after that, maybe like a, a week or two later. I don't, I don't remember specifically. Okay. So even though you'd been married before, you were now having a wedding reception. Uh, yes, when we got married, it was just the two of us. And at this wedding reception, you had a lot of guests come? Um, I'd say maybe a dozen. My, my friends and family came. And they're dressed up? Yes. You're in your wedding dress? Yes. Okay. And I'm going to show you States Exhibit 10. I want you to tell me what this is. Or I'm sorry, it's 100. I want, to, I want you to tell me what this is going to come up behind you. What is this a picture of? Um, that's a picture of uh, Kevin, Christy, me, and then Doug. Okay. And is that a picture from the wedding reception that we just talked about? Yes, ma'am. I'm going to show you States Exhibit 101. What is that? Um, that's a picture of me and my friend Christy. And is it at the same wedding reception? Yes. And States Exhibit 102, what is that? Um, it's a picture of my friend Laura and me and then my friend Christy. And this is also at the same reception? Yes, ma'am. Okay. State will move into evidence States 100 through 102. Any objection? I'm sorry, I missed it. Any objection to states no. 100, 101, 102? No. Received. Thank you. And in states 100, are you scared here of Doug? Um, no, I would not say no. You said on direct examination that around this time you were living the nightmare. Those were your words, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Were you living the night where, nightmare here? Oh, no, not at that moment, no. That was a very nice day. How about at this moment? Oh, it was, like, it was a good day. And States 102 at this moment? Same. It was a good day. So you get pregnant. <clears throat> and you decide to move in with your mother. So when do you decide to move in with your mother in Florida? Um, it was the end of August, I believe. I was really sick, and he brought me down to my mom's house and dropped me off. Okay, but going to your mom's house was your choice, right? Um, we decided together. He said it, he couldn't take care of me, he was too busy, and that my mom could take care of me better, so... I was happy to go. And you needed someone to take care of you while you were pregnant. I was really sick, yes. Okay. 
So you moved down with your mother at a, maybe August of 2017, you said? The end of August, I believe. Okay. But there's still this issue of the injunction in um, South Carolina while this is going on, this South Carolina-Florida thing, correct? Um, I'm not sure I understand the question. Well, you said you, you applied for the South Carolina injunction or you received the South Carolina injunction um, right around that time in 2017. Actually, I think you said November 2017. Yes, a, a few months later. So shortly November. after you moved in with your mother, a couple of months, you filed for an injunction in South Carolina. Yes, ma'am. And we talked about the fact that, or you talked with the defense about the fact that it was a mutual injunction. Yes, ma'am. So both parties agreed to stay away from each other, correct? Um, yeah, I believe that it, it was for both parties to stay away. No evidence was presented at this hearing? Um, I, I don't believe so. None of your complaints were heard at this hearing? Um, there was like a, a written, uh, like a filing and the, but the judge, other than that, did not hear any evidence at the hearing. That's correct. All of that was um, forestalled because the two of you agreed, okay, fine, we will have this voluntary stay away order. Um, I, it was decided through the attorneys, but I believe that that was, yes. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So the judge never found that Doug Benefield was dangerous and ordered this injunction. Uh I'm not sure what the judge found. I don't know what you mean by that. There was never a court finding giving you an injunction um, other than you stipulated to it. The, the judge ordered it, yes, ma'am. Okay. And this injunction actually, part of it says that neither party shall harass or threaten or do those types of things to each other. Yes, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then after you're in Florida, you get a package that you say was in violation of this injunction. And it's a birthday present, right? Um, yes. It's a tea set. Among other things, yes, ma'am. And you liked tea. I, I like drinking tea, yes, ma'am. You drank tea all the time with Doug? Uh, yes. Okay. And you open this tea and, and you claim that it smelled so strongly that you automatically rushed it to the sheriff's office. Um, I didn't specifically sniff the tea. It was when I opened the box, the whole like contents had a very strong chemical smell. So you immediately rushed it over to the sheriff's office? Uh, no, ma'am. I immediately sealed it up and I left it in my garage. For how long? Um... I don't remember specifically. It was like a, maybe a day or two. I don't, I don't remember. It was a little bit longer than a day or two, was it not? I don't remember. Okay. So after this time goes by, you take it to the sheriff's office. And you claim that this was a violation of injunction. Uh, right? It was. Yes, ma'am. And you also claim that this was all part of uh, Doug's poisoning scheme to poison you and your unborn child. Uh, hazmat informed me that there was toxic chemicals. I don't chemicals want to hear what someone else told you. I want to hear what you claimed, that this was part of his poisoning of you, um, plan to poison you. Well, based off of what I was told, that was the conclusion yes I no, came to. Yes or no, Yes or no. What, according to the way you felt, this gift was a part of his plan to poison you. Um, it concerned me, yes, okay. ma'am. So no charges were filed for that, correct? Correct. So you file for an injunction based on the same allegations, right? Um, when my injunction in South Carolina was getting ready to expire, yes, I, I filed for one in Florida. Okay. So when you filed in Florida, about what time was this? What date? Um, I could give you a ballpark it was in the spring I don't remember exactly spring when. spring of 2018 uh, yes ma'am okay so you had left Doug in South Carolina August of 2017 yes ma'am and you filed for an injunction 
in the spring of 2018. That sounds right. But you hadn't been living with him, correct? Correct. You hadn't even had any contact with him for a very long time when you filed for that injunction, right? Um, well, other than him sending the box and, um, yeah. Okay. So what violence were you trying to prohibit by filing this injunction? Um, Everything that happened in South Carolina. Well, I was just hoping that it wouldn't happen again. Okay. And at the same time you did this motion for an injunction, you also did a motion to terminate Doug's parental rights, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So during this time that you haven't been with him in almost a year, at least a half a year, there hasn't been any violence other than you say the T said. You're filing for an injunction all at the same time that you're trying to terminate his parental rights. This is all correct, right? Um, sounds correct. Okay. And you hadn't even had the baby yet. As of when? As of the time that you were trying to terminate his parental rights. I, I don't remember what the date was, but okay. it, it would have all been around that time. And then there's the hearing that goes on for this injunction, right? And this is in front of Judge Moreland, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you had a two-day hearing on this? Yes, ma'am. Partially, it was a motion for your injunction based on these issues, and it was also Doug's motion to be able to see his child, right? Um. I believe at some point things got consolidated, but I don't recall specifically. So at this point, Doug had not seen his daughter. Correct. And your daughter was how old? Uh, as of the date, like the last court date? Yes. Uh, about six months old. And had there been any violence towards you between the time that you filed for this and the time when you had the hearing and she was six months old? Um, he had showed up at night in my driveway, um, but I mean, there's no physical contact if that's what you're asking. Okay. And was this a time when the baby had been born? Um, I don't remember the date of when he was in the driveway. Um, how about, let, since we're talking about this, let's talk about the incident you talked about where the neighbor said that there was, that Doug was there. Can you tell me about that? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, he was outside standing in the yard at night, um, I guess trying to look in the windows of my house. And where's this neighbor's house? Um, she is directly across the street. Okay. And isn't it true, in fact, that this was very dark? It was very dark out. Uh, yes, ma'am, it was at night. Okay. And your neighbor told you that she saw someone in her backyard walking, correct? Um... I think she said that when she confronted him, he, he kind of ran away. Okay. He was, she never told you he was at your window. I, what she said was that he was um, trying to look in the windows. In her yard? Uh, the way the houses are situated, where he was standing, he was looking across into the windows of her house. Yes, ma'am. She couldn't see who this person was. Um, she told she's you. Asking, she's asking Miss Benefield about what the neighbor knew. She told you she could not identify this person. Um, she said by just looking as dark as it was, she had a hard time identifying him by his face, but that she identified his voice. That's interesting. So let's talk about that. So when she tells you that there's somebody in her backyard, you go to her house, right? You end um, up together with her. Yes. All right. Not at her house, but yes. And you play a recording that you've recorded like a voicemail from Doug for her, right? Uh, she believed it was Doug, and she said that she could probably identify his voice because he had a unique voice, and so I played a voicemail I had from him, um, and she identified the fact him is, from she that. didn't tell you she thought it was Doug. You just asked her if it was Doug. Um, I believe she contacted us and said that there was a strange man looking across into our windows and she was freaked out and she was, wasn't sure if it was him. Okay. 
I, I don't remember specifically. I'm sorry. This is a long time ago. And you play a recording of Doug's voice for her. Yes, ma'am. And she goes, oh, that's him. Yes, ma'am. That's the one that was there. Yes, ma'am. So that is the ID that Doug was in her backyard. I believe she also described his body type, um, his stature. Uh, she said he was wearing um, a baseball cap, which he often did. So I think that was probably part of it. Don't a lot of people wear baseball caps? She needs to allow sure. before she cuts her off. I, I, I've been able to follow along, so I'll overrule at this point. There's a lot of people that are five foot nine, right? Oh, yes, ma'am. A lot of people that weigh 160 pounds. Yes, ma'am. A lot of people that wear baseball hats. Yes, ma'am. And isn't it true that this person in the backyard said to her, I live around here, I live here? Mm-hmm. Okay. I believe so. I, I wasn't there for that part, but that's what I believe she told me. Thank you. Yeah. Now, I want to move forward to 2019. Around this time, Judge Moreland had already ruled that you could not have your injunction, right? She denied it, yes, ma'am. And that Doug could have immediate visitation with his daughter, she ordered time sharing, yes. Um, did you start visitation with, with Doug and Emerson very shortly after that hearing? Uh, yes, according to the, the court order, yes, ma'am. And you decided you were going to go with him on um, this visitation? I offered, and he said he would be glad for me to come, so yes, I went. This person that you lived in a nightmare with, you decided to go with him on this visitation? Yes, Now, the Judge Moreland hearing, when she ruled, she made it very clear that um, she did not okay. see your side. Sustained. You had no faith that Judge Moreland was going to help you from that Correction. day forward. Overruled. You had no faith that Judge Moreland was going to help you from that day forward. Um. I, I don't know. They'd say I thought she would never help me, but, I mean, she denied the injunction, yes. So you go for this visitation with Doug, along with him and Emerson, and that begins sort of a, I think Stephanie Murphy called it like a honeymoon period or a happy period piece. Would you agree with that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So during this time... Um, you spent a lot of time with Doug. Yes. And a lot of time with Emerson. Yes. And you weren't scared of Doug at that time. Uh, he was being very kind. Okay. So you weren't scared of him at that time? No. I, I mean, I, I had things at the back of my mind, but he was being very kind. So then around summer of 2019, you actually make arrangements with Doug. He's going to move into your mom's house. Uh, he wanted to move in, yes. You actually agreed to that. Um, not specifically. He didn't really ask my opinion. He told me. Okay. And then the date that he was supposed to move in, you, you made plans with him, Hold correct? Sir, who's crinkling the paper? Is that Mr. O'Keefe? Sir, can you please stop? Thank you. Go ahead. So during this time, you're speaking with Doug. Yes. Right? Yes. And you're talking with him about moving into your home. He was insistent that we needed to the move in together. Is yes or no, please. You were talking with him. She, she interrupting the answer. If the question calls for yes or no, the questioner has the right to expect a yes or no. Or I don't know, or I don't recall, so as you, opposed to a narrative. You were speaking with Doug about him moving into the house. Yes. And about his things being moved and when they were going to be moved. Um, yes, I'm sure. And at any time during this, did you say to Doug, no, you're not moving in? Uh, yes. You said no. I'm sorry? You, you told him, no, he cannot move in? Uh, yes, that's why he ultimately didn't move in. As I said, okay. I can't do this. Isn't it true that, in fact, you didn't tell him no, you just weren't available the day he was supposed to move in. Um, no, that's not correct. 
Okay. So you're saying the day he was supposed to move in, he knew he wasn't supposed to move in? Is that what you're saying? Oh, we had a conversation that day, and I told him that I didn't want him moving in. Okay. And then you did not take his phone calls. You would not speak with him. I think yeah. the word was ghosting. You ghosted him. Um, I don't know whose word that is, but that, that's fine. Yes, ma'am. Okay. But visitation continued. Yes, ma'am. All right. And you continued to exchange custody of Emerson where? The sheriff's office or? Um, I believe at that time we were doing the sheriff's office. And sometime around this time, you show up to this visitation with an engagement ring on, right? No, ma'am. Okay. Who is Dennis Beatty? Dennis Beatty? Beatty. Who is that? Um, he was a gentleman I, I dated at one point. And it was during this time that you were dating him, right? Um, after we, like, I told him not to move in, and then we started just doing time sharing with Emerson. Yes, a after that, there was a period of time where okay. we dated. Yes, ma'am. And isn't it a fact that Doug filed for a divorce after one of these visitations? I'm not sure when he filed for a divorce specifically. He filed for divorce after he knew that you were dating this other man, right? Um, I'm, once again, I'm not sure when he filed. How did he find out? Did you tell him you were dating him? Um, no, ma'am. Right. How did he find out? I think he was stalking me. It wasn't the ring on your finger? It, it was not an engagement ring. Yeah. Well, it was a ring. Did he see the ring on your finger? I'm not sure, but he saw I wear rings all the time. Okay. So Doug files for divorce. And all of a sudden, you file for, well, you start a bunch of complaints, correct? About his treatment of Emerson. What you say, his bad treatment of Emerson. Well, she started coming home hurt. It's a yes or no question. Did you file complaints about his treatment of Emerson? Um, yes. Okay. And... You eventually filed for another petition to get an injunction based on those incidences that you claim happened with Emerson. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you complained about um, the first time and nothing was done. Is that correct? With the police, no charges were filed, nothing was done? I'm not sure specifically what you're referring to. The first complaint that was made about Emerson and Doug, you agree that you made uh, allegations. Yes. During this time, did you speak with members of the sheriff's office? Um, I'm not sure specifically what time you're referring to. During the time that there were allegations that Doug was abusing Emerson, did you speak to the sheriff's office? Uh, yes, ma'am. On numerous occasions? I would say so, yes. At least five? Um, probably, yes, ma'am. Okay. And during those conversations, you were making allegations that Doug was abusing Emerson, right? Um, well, I was explaining the injury she had come home with. I mean, I wasn't there. I don't know what happened. Okay. But you were alleging that Doug was abusing the child. Uh, well, I was concerned after her pediatrician called CPS and said that she thought she was being abused. Are you aware that pediatricians are required to call CPS when a mother alleges that? I didn't allege anything. I brought a video to show her at the appointment, mm -hmm. and um, she called so CPS. You didn't... Well, after showing her a video of some behavior, uh, she called CPS, and she informed me that I was also a mandatory reporter and that it would be negligent if I didn't also call and make a report. You brought Emerson to the pediatrician specifically for this reason, correct? Uh, no, no ma'am. She had her, her checkup. But you brought this up to the pediatrician. Uh, at the end, she asked if 
either of us had any questions. Um, and that's when you bring up, oh, she must be being abused. Uh, no, I, I described to her the behavior that I was seeing, and I, I showed her a video um, when she came to her own conclusions. Okay. So you spoke to the sheriff's office at that about that investigation and other investigations, and you about the investigations that Doug was abusing Emerson. Um, a sheriff usually comes out with the CPI from Child Protection. And you spoke to them? Um, I, I mean, they were there when I was talking, I guess, yes. And you were talking, making allegations against Doug, assuming that he caused injuries to Emerson. I'm not sure of my exact words. I was trying to describe to them what I was seeing and my understanding of the situation at the time. You filed a petition for an injunction based on those things, correct? Uh, at the advice of my attorney, yes, ma'am. Okay. Whether your attorney advised it or not, you chose to do that, correct? Um, yes, I followed the advice of my attorney. And you were aware that if you went forward on this injunction, that it was going to be in front of Judge Moreland? Yes, ma'am. And this injunction hearing was supposed to take place on September 30th of 2020. Um, um, yes, 2020. Yeah, it, it got moved several times, but that was, yes, that was a date. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it was supposed to take place on that day. Yes, ma'am. And there were other things pending. Do you know what the other pending items were? Um, not specifically. Okay. Right. I'm not sure what you're asking. One of them was Doug's request for a divorce, correct? Um, yes, we both filed for divorce at that point. Yes. So Mr. Benefield filed for divorce. You file an injunction petition. Then you file for divorce. Uh, I filed for divorce first. Okay. And then you're scheduled to have this hearing on 930. Um, yes, the hearing was scheduled for 930, yes. And you're speaking with Doug during this time, right? I mean, we just yes. heard 200 and whatever text messages between you and Doug. Yes, ma'am. So do you at any time in that say to him, I'm going to go forward with this injunction on, on Wednesday, on the 30th. Uh, no, ma'am. In fact, based on those text messages, you were dropping the petition for an injunction. Yes, we talked about dropping everything, yes. Okay. No, you talked about it, but you said you were going to. Yes, ma'am. And that is what the result of the mediation was, that there was not going to be any mediation, really, because you were reconciling. Um. Yeah, we agreed, I guess, in order to move to Maryland. My understanding, um, the attorneys were advising us to, if we closed things down, that it would make it easier, like, legal-wise, for right. us to relocate. So you were telling Doug that's what you were going to do? Uh, yes, we were uh, trying to work things out so we could all go to Maryland, yes. And drop the injunction? Uh, that was one of the things. And you wanted him to drop everything, right? Uh, the the motion to release the report, the dissolution of marriage, you wanted him to drop everything? Um, no, we filed a joint stipulation so we could get the report. But then you asked him to drop that, didn't you? Um, I Possibly. I know we kind of went back and forth with so many things. Okay. You never had any intention of not going forward on your injunction. Honestly, it was kind of one of those things that some days I thought that maybe I should and some days I thought that I shouldn't. So during this one week before you shot Doug, you're talking and you're saying to him things like, oh, we're packing boxes, we're getting everything together. This whole time, you knew you weren't going to stop that injunction hearing. I, I hadn't decided yet. Okay. Your attorney testified that you were going forward on that injunction hearing. She was advising me to keep it. Okay. So during this time when you're telling Doug to bring different boxes, um, bring tape, you asked him to go to Selby Gardens, right? Um, yes, we all went. I think we got lunch. We brought Emerson so she could play. Okay. And you are 
having conflicted emotions about whether to go forward on an injunction. Yes, ma'am. While you're out having these types of experiences with them. Yeah, sometimes things are really good and other times they weren't. <laughs> okay. And so how about, let's see. This is st part of State's Exhibit 98. I don't even know what he's doing. I think he's giving you clues that I gotta guess. Get real? Real? <laughs> Working mother, not a working mother. Working mother, not a working mother. Working mother. Working mother. Working mother. Oh, no, it's running out of time. House. And Real house. Wife. Oh, the oh, housewives of... Oh, oh, oh. oh. And this video was taken the week before you shot him, right? Um, I don't, I don't know the exact date. When what? I mean, in your mind, it was very close to the time, correct? Yeah, I'm sure it was right around then. I don't remember when okay. it was. And during this time that you were having these text messages with Doug and you're planning to move to Maryland, um, there's no violence going on? Um, no. No? I guess, I guess he, not, no. He's not hitting you? No, ma'am. He's not choking you? No, ma'am. He's not shoving you around? No, ma'am. So this entire time, there is no violence going on? Well, I don't know specifically what time frame you're talking about. I'm sorry. But... During this, let's say from 2018 to 2019, when you're not living with him. I mean, you, if you classify violence as him like I'm asking punching me or choking me. Violence I during mean, this time. He, he could be rough sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Did he ever punch you? Uh, not during that time, no. Did he ever hit you? No, ma'am. Did he ever use a weapon against you during that time? Not during that time, no. Okay. So in between the time of 2019 to 2020, where you shot him, was there any physical violence? Um, like I said, sometimes he'd be a little rough, you know. But other than that, he never was physically violent. Um, he didn't, like, punch holes in the walls or anything like that, no. So when I asked you, if, has he been violent, you said, well, he didn't punch holes in the walls. Is that what you just said? Um, I, that's so, what I just said, yes, ma'am. So punching a hole in a wall to you is, is a definition when I ask, was he violent? Your definition of that is punching a hole in a wall. I, th I think that is violent. Okay. I'm not sure what you're asking. Okay. So... Just a second. So I want to get to the day that, that all of this happened. This happened on a Sunday, right? Yes, ma'am. And you're moving on, or you have a hearing on Wednesday. Uh, I believe that's correct. And yes, you're moving right after that. I, I think the actual day of move was kind of in flex. It seemed like it changed a thousand times. You're all getting in the car together. Not together, but you're driving cars together um, to go to Maryland. Yeah, I, I believe he was going to be driving the U-Haul and pulling his truck. Um. And I, I think that my mom was driving her car and I was driving 
mine. And you were telling him during that time that you were going to move to Maryland and attempt to reconcile. Uh, no, ma'am. You weren't telling him that? Uh, no, not in those words, no. Did you hear Dr. Broder testify about that? That he, he said that when you were with Doug... Objection, you're assisting... So you're, you're denying that you ever told Doug that you were wanting to reconcile with him? I said I wanted to find a way that we could do things together as a family for Emerson's sake, you know, and that's why we started doing things differently. He so, wanted to move back in, you know, together, and I told him that I didn't want to do that. I didn't feel comfortable with that. Did you say that in Dr. Broder's office in front of Doug? Um, no, not in front of him. So... When you're with a safe person, a psychologist, you're not telling Doug this. What? I'm sorry? You're saying that you told Doug when it was just the two of you that you didn't want to move in together. Yes, ma'am. And you felt safe telling him, I don't want to move in with you. Right? That's what you're saying. Um, yes, we had that conversation many times. Yes. But you're in front of this psychologist who one would think is a safe environment, with Doug sitting next to you. You hear Doug say to Dr. Broder, we are going to Maryland and we are going to try and reconcile. And you don't feel safe enough to say to Dr. Broder, no, that's not what I want to do. I, I would want to make him look bad in front of somebody else. Okay. I wasn't going to disagree with him in front of anybody. Okay. So the plan was to load up the truck, get everything done, and then move very shortly after the court hearing, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you had no intention of dropping that injunction, so you knew on the day of that hearing, he was going to know, right? I, I'm sorry? You knew that Doug was going to know that you had no intention of reconciling with him. Um, we had had the conversation many times. I think he understood where I was at. Okay. You saw the text messages between you and him, right? Yes, ma'am. Would you agree that those text messages do not indicate that? Um, it doesn't say we're getting back together and moving in together. It doesn't say we're not going to reconcile. I mean, not specifically, no. I wasn't going to argue with him. If you got your injunction on that day, September 30th, how would you have moved together? Speculative. What was your plan if that injunction was Speculative. granted? Different question over the objection. No, you can approach. So, if the injunction were granted on that day, what was your plan about moving to Maryland with them? I don't know that I really had a plan. I wasn't even sure whether or not I was going to go through the injunction at that point. Okay. Okay, so I want to get to the night that all this happened. So you knew Doug was coming over. Yes. You invited him over. Yes. To help you move stuff in the house. Um, well, specifically stuff in the garage, but yes. Stuff in the garage to the truck. Mm -hmm. And he came to your house a couple of times. He came and then left and then came back again. Uh, yeah, I believe he came twice that day. And there is a gate to your community. Mm -hmm. And... When he's at the gate, you had to let him in? Um, sometimes, uh, because he was frequent in and out, 
Um, sometimes the gate remembers license plates and sometimes it opens and sometimes it doesn't. Um, sometimes he would just follow people in. Um, the gate kind of stays open for a while. Um, but uh, yeah, sorry. But on this day, you weren't concerned about him coming over. I, no, I knew he was coming. Okay. <clears throat> and when he came over, your mother and Emerson went to the park. Um, I believe they were uh, headed there. I'm, I'm not sure. I think they were down the driveway or on the sidewalk, something like that. They so, were on their way there. You weren't so afraid that you wanted your mother to stay there and watch? Um, no, we were just packing to move. Okay, so you weren't afraid? I definitely didn't expect this to happen. So it was okay with you that your mother left? Yeah, at that time. Okay. So if I heard you right during your direct, you said he bumped your shoulder twice. Body check. I don't know if that's what you called it. He walked into you with a box, right? Yes. And then at the end, you, you say he slapped you? He, he hit me. I, I don't... I wouldn't know how to classify it. He struck me. He hit me. Was his hand open or closed? I don't remember. Okay. And because of the those things, you claim that you thought he was going to kill you. He had never hit me before. Okay. And you thought he was going to kill you. He wouldn't let me leave. I tried to leave. He stopped me. The, the question is, you thought he was going to kill you. Yeah. Okay. Now, when you were in the bedroom, you decided to get your firearm. And it was where? It was in a storage bin on top of the laundry basket. Okay. So I'm going to show you States Exhibit 52. If you could turn around and look at that. Where was your firearm? Um, it was in the bin on top of the basket. Here? That, that's the basket. The laundry Where was basket. the bin? It's that right on top. Okay. So it was in here? Yes, ma'am. Why would you have a firearm in there? Um, I had just emptied all the furniture and everything out of my room, and it was kind of like what was left from my drawers, and so it got put into a bin. Okay. And that was not your only firearm in that room, correct? Um, correct. You had a firearm in the closet? Um, I, my carry gun was in my backpack, which was my purse at the time. So in this room, with a mattress and a broom and a hamper, you had two firearms? Um, yes. So you go into the room and you grab your firearm. Is it in a holster? Uh, I don't remember. Okay. And... You claim that Doug does what? He came and slammed the door open. He was standing in the doorway. He said, you're fucking done. He said, you're fucking done. And that made you fear for your life. Yeah. Can we turn the lights up, please? Thank you. So he says you're fucking done, and you point the gun, and you shoot. I held it out in front of me first so he could see it, and I said, stop. If, Judge, if I could have her step down so she can demonstrate. You may. If you could just come down. So Doug opens the door and does what? Standing in the doorway. Okay. Like this. He said, You're fucking done. And I held the gun out in front of me. I said, Stop. <laughs> he got into this like fighting pose. He literally turned sideways. And he was like moving around with his like arms in his hands. And he started like inching forward towards me. So he's. He, he, why do you call it a fighting stick? Oh, he 
know, like a ninja or something. I don't know. Okay, so he's standing there. He turns to like this and starts moving his arms around. Yeah. Well, show me. What was he doing? Kind of like I don't know. He got like this. And he was like making like fighting motions. I don't know. I'm not a fighter. I don't know. Okay. It was scary. Did he have his hands in fists? Not at that point. They were like. I don't know. Was he then coming he at you like, like this? And he lunged at me. He came really quickly. Okay, so he lunged. Was his fist up when he lunged? I don't remember. So you start shooting, and he does what? He kept coming at me. Okay, so then you keep shooting again, and he falls down on his back. His legs went up in the air. Okay, where do his legs go? In the air. How high in the air? I don't know. Do they go over his head? I don't know. It's like his feet slipped out. Okay. And, and his feet and his legs went up in the air. And were you still shooting at the time? I don't remember. You can have a seat. So after this incident, you claim that you had swelling to your face, right? Go ahead and take a minute. All right, members of the jury, can you please close up your doors, put them on your chairs. I'm going to ask you to step out for a minute. You can use the facilities. It's not quite our mid-afternoon break, but we'll treat it as such. Uh, please don't discuss the case amongst yourselves. Don't discuss it with anybody outside the jury. Don't do any research like we've talked about. The jury's out. You can have a seat. I'm sorry. All right, we'll take five minutes. Yes.